Hi, today we're going to share Bronfen Brenner's ecological theory. Uh, myself, Ramel Wakai, and Andrew Peplinski will also be your presenters for today. A little bit about Yuri Braun friend Brenner. Uh, born 1917 to um, in, in time he passed away in 2005. He was actually a Russian American developmental uh, psychologist and a professor at Cornell University. So he's most famous for creating a Head Start program in 1965, which um, later on led to him working on the Head Start program, um, which is initially what we're going to talk about called the ecological systems theory. And it was formed from that. It has a little bit more to do about um, some of the things that occurred during poverty when he was uh, working with the Head Start program. So the picture to the left just identifies how um, there was no child left behind um, concept even back then with um, poverty being a strong indicator of learning, education, and then moving forward um, and then succeeding in society, which is part of his philosophy in this uh, EST program or, or theory. All right, I want to expand a little bit on what Mel has just covered. There was a prior to Bonf and Brennan um, related to these sorts of ideas of ecological theory. Uh, in the 1930s, a psychologist named Kurt Lewin had published some uh, literature on human behavior being related to environmental factors. Uh, the University of Cincinnati credits Kurt Lewin as kind of the origin of some of these ideas. Uh, Bronfen Brenner took the work uh, and published a, a pivotal book in 1979 known as Ecological Systems Theory um, and is really kind of known as the, the father of bringing these ideas together uh, that an ecological uh, perspective can be taken on behavior and, and learning. Um, and since then, we've seen a continuation with some of these ideas in psychology to form ecological counseling and alternative perspectives. So the idea behind ecological theory is that you start with layers. Um, so there are several layers uh, surrounding the core. Each layer interfaces with uh, another, and the individual is um, basically the core. So when you look at their sex, age, and then their health category, that's who I identify uh, from the start. And this is from the younger age group all the way to the older, how these things can affect us in society along the way, um, even with an adult's learning. So adult learning has a lot to do with this as well as the younger learning. And we'll touch more on that within the systems. Now that we have a basic understanding and visual interpretation of this ecological theory, I want to begin with the microsystem, which is the smallest component directly after the individual. The microsystem is really the location that the individual interacts with. Um, this may include the school that you attend, the family you have, there are things on your day-to-day -day that you're directly involved in. And these sorts of interactions then develop uh, lasting impacts on your development. Uh, you know, you, who your family members are and what sort of norms and, and pressures that those individuals apply to you will help shape that individual. The next system up is the mesosystem. In this system, we can imagine that the microsystem may interact in a broader level. So for example, if your family has a relationship with the school that you attend, or your family has a relationship with another family, those things will impact you, and you don't have any direct control over them, but your microsystem does. So maybe your microsystem influences uh, whether or not they have a relationship with your teacher, or your family influences whether or not what kids you can play with. So this begins to kind of indirectly influence the child, um, and uh, it, it does so through that microsystem. So we're kind of moving up and out, uh, and we can imagine that those sorts of pressures would influence, again, that learning and development of the kid, uh, who you can and can't play with, or uh, who you might uh, never meet because your parents just don't allow it, uh, would have an impact on you. 
Now I'll cover the ecosystem or the exosystem, excuse me. So this layer encompasses factors that the child does not cause or affect. So for instance, when you're looking at abusive behaviors or disorders that occur from um, things that they can't control, our parents yelling, um, divorce, um, outside um, environment, until factors that control um, <clears throat> only a, a reaction in the classroom. That's the layer that you would look at to see what is that outside environment doing to them with inside of their um, learning and, and shaping their cultural understanding of what they need to do in the classroom. There is also a changing media landscape on um, the exosystem, which has to do with how we view the things on the outside. How do we view divorce? How do we view uh, separation? Uh, today, how do we view interracial uh, marriages and how that affects us in the classroom, where we may be children of interracial relationships as well as children of uh, divorces from interracial relationships? Next, we have the macro system, which is similar to the exosystem in that the individual experiencing these pressures and norms can't directly influence those pressures and norms. So, for example, in culture, um, you might have some sort of pressure, uh, uh, political pressure or economic pressure or social pressure, but you yourself can't uh, directly alter that. Now, in the macro system, this has less to do with the social and economic pressures on you and more to do with the social and economic pressures on, let's say, your neighborhood or kind of systems that begin to expand uh, above just you. Um, and in this way, it's a very indirect, indirect influence. But we can imagine that if you live in a specific area that receives different funding or, or something of the sort, that's going to influence the opportunities you have, the ability for you to learn, uh, maybe things that you become interested in and so forth. And in that way, you're going to influence a child's behavior. So the chrono system is uh, it's a time-based system. So outside layer, it has a continuity and the patterns in themselves uh, are how individual individuals interact with their social um, norms or social um, genders and groups. So like the types of friendships or responsibilities that a toddler would have would be very different from, um, let's say a teenager. The teenager would have more of a developed mind um, <clears throat> and be able to solve more complex problems where the toddler's mind would not be developed and such, and then you would see the difference in learning along that way. This is also where our experiences come into play. If we're adult learners, the experiences that we've um, gained over the time, we've actually changed our thought process on how we interact with people and then how to uh, handle complex problems or situations. All right, now that we've kind of talked about the theory uh, in broad or in general, I think it's important to discuss application. Um, at the core of this theory, we must understand that we're talking about a bunch of layering of factors, uh, environmental factors, external factors to the individual that influence the individual's learning. Um, if we come to understand that, then it becomes interesting because you as a teacher have some control over those external factors. You know, where the uh, when the kid shows up to your classroom, are you able to interact um, maybe with their family or come to understand some of those factors that they're, they're struggling with on an individual level better? And by doing that, you might be able to create an environment uh, which can alleviate some of those pressures momentarily and enhance that individual's learning capacity or learn ability to take in the information that you're giving them. And this way, I think it's important to recognize um, what is going on with the individual uh, holistically, um, and then how can you, and, and what factors do you have control over to help uh, begin to influence their learning um, from an environmental perspective? This concludes our discussion on the ecological theory. Thank you for your time. Uh, Andrew and I very appreciate it.